And look at that, I've even already got Unreal open. How professional was that? Um, now, okay, let's just go into it and I'll kind of explain what's going on and we'll just, we'll just, we'll just see how it comes. We'll see how it comes, we'll see if anything crashes, we'll see if you have any questions and I'll try and make it as clear as possible because there's about like a few different things I want to cover about lighting and I'm gonna try and make it clear so that I don't explain it in a confusing way. Um, Alright, so the thing I wanted to show you guys last time, here's our scene. Uh, looks so lovely and stuff and let's say I grab this table and uh, let's ungroup this because I've grouped it previously let's say I grab this table and I'm like I want to I wanna move this table over here and I move it over there and whoops what's this there's a shadow here still this shadow is suddenly much higher quality and this red little thingy pops up here saying that uh, the lighting needs to be rebuilt so what's that about so essentially, uh, every object and every light in Unreal, and this is true for Unity as well, but we don't, we haven't used it in there very much. Um, every object has three states, right? So over here on the side, on the details panel, right? You can see your kind of numbers and stuff that, that change when you move things, yeah? So underneath that, you have this uh, mobility thing, and this is kind of to do with lighting. And there's three different states. There's static, which essentially means baked lighting. It means for the object to have shadow and react to light, um, it needs to have a calculation done that essentially puts the lighting into the ground and into the objects around it, right? Hold on, I'm just gonna turn, turn something down. Just do some loudness. There we go. Amazing. Uh, yes, I am recording it. Uh, right, so if it's a static object, you know, static means it doesn't move. This is an object that isn't going to move. It's static, so I set it to static. And that means, okay, so since it's not going to move, the light is going to be calculated once and then not calculated again. So the lighting on the object and the shadows of the object are calculated once and then not again. So if it during the game or whilst you're editing the level you're like oh i'm gonna move this object it's like oh it's it's been calculated already and now we have two objects that are unbuilt and that means that we need to essentially regenerate the lighting and we do that by as i showed you before going up here to build build lighting only we have it set the preview which is the minimum so that my computer doesn't blow up um and as you can see, it's going to do slow calculations. Da -da 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 -da. And bam. You always get this box in front of your face. It's, it's always going to be there. And as you can see, the lighting we calculated before is gone. And there's new lighting calculated for these two objects. And as you can see, their shadows are no longer super amazing. So that's, that's static. Objects that are static need to have their light built. Almost all of your objects are static. Uh, it's the most efficient, you know, uh, memory efficient thing you can do. It improves your FPS and all of that stuff. Wonderful. But there's two more. Okay, what's that other one? Movable. So our character is uh, movable because our character doesn't stay in one place. It actually moves all over the place and has a shadow all over the place. So obviously we need this shadow updating all the time. We need his lighting updating all the time and all of that. So he cannot be a static character. He's, he's a movable character. He cannot be a static character. I don't even know if I can turn him to a static character. I'm going to try static. What happens now? I can't move him. So I guess, I guess that's what happens. He stopped being movable. Um, anyway, did I fix that now by putting it back? Yeah, okay. Jeez. All right, so <laughs> essentially um, you can set any object movable and movable just means that it's um, it's not going to wait for a calculation. It's always going to have, so this shadow is still here because it's baked into the floor. Uh, so actually this shadow isn't going to move uh, until we recalculate the lighting because that's not on the chair, it's on the floor. The floor has had a calculator on it. Um, but the chair is at the movable now and you see I'm moving it around and we don't have a little prompt telling us we need to rebake the lighting 
because this chair will be calculated continuously. Its light and its shadow will be calculated continuously, so we don't need to um, we don't need to do that. Um, so that's movable, you know, pretty straightforward. Okay, so what's this um, what's this stationary thing here? Stationary. What does that mean? Um, so the way I understand it, stationary I think is more used for lights. And what stationary does uh, is it essentially does bake lights to anything that is static. But if anything that is movable comes past it, it's going to actually put a shadow on it. Um, so this is a static object, but if I set it to movable, this object doesn't need to be built. And this light is still going to you know, put a light on it. If I set the light to static, I believe that what it's going to do after the lighting is generated is it's just going to put lights on the object, you know, and if a movable object walks past, it may not affect it. That's that's how I understand it, right? So to put it more, you know, uh, more easily to just, you know, explain the main two lights, the, the main two types of objects are static and movable. And static means you need to calculate the lighting, movable means you don't, right? So this is the main thing in Unity, you do need to calculate your lighting. The benefit to that is that, you know, baking your lighting makes the scene much more efficient and also um, allows you to kind of get really good quality lighting uh, for not too much of a performance hit because it's only calculated once. Now, as you can see, this lighting is not wonderful. Uh, it's a little bit uh, wiggly. And that's to do with settings we can change later on. It is, it is also to do with the objects themselves. Um, and essentially, if you open up an object, so let's open up this object by double clicking its kind of object window. Um, one of the things that you can actually see here is um, the different UV channels of an object. So if you remember UV sets from uh, Maya, so you have your UVs on the square, and you can actually add another UV set, so kind of like another version of the UVs, right? So you can have multiple versions of the UVs. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And there is this thing in Unreal, which is essentially the... Um, there is a second set of UVs that Unreal uses to put the shadows onto. <clears throat> excuse me again. I hope that doesn't sound too gross. Um, there's, a, there's a second set of UVs which Unreal uses on which it places the lighting and the shadows and stuff. So shadows look a bit naff because actually the, the UVs for the lights uh, look a bit look a bit naff, right? And um, if you're wondering, okay, what are these what are these light UVs called? Why is there a second set of UVs for lights? I don't I don't understand why that's a thing. Uh, don't it's called a light map, right? So that makes it a little easier. It is an actual thing. And light maps, and I'm actually just going to search them up. Uh, UV4 light maps. And this is a good chance to show you that um, Unreal Engine has documentation, which is very good. Both Unreal, both Unreal and Unity have very good documentation. Um, and light maps are essentially um, just another set of UVs uh, that are used to calculate uh, light and shadow. Um, Unreal automatically makes them once you import. So when you're importing, it has a little tick box that says uh, generate light map UVs. Every time you put in your object, it will do this. Um, and as a result, some of them are going to suck. Uh, and we're going to get all these kind of like wiggly shadows as a result. Um, and to, whilst you're lighting your scene, you know, don't worry about these too much right now. In a later session, I'm actually going to show you how you can make your own light map UVs so they don't have to be generated, and then you're going to get pristine shadows, and it's going to be amazing. Um, but I don't want to cover that right now, because I'm already going to cover quite a few things, and uh, I don't want you guys to lose track of at all. Okay, so anyway, yes, objects, movable and stationary, and baking, wonderful. So, uh, let's look at some lights, all right? So just like in Unity, we have this directional light. It's essentially the sun. Um, it has, uh, you know, all the different things you can adjust here. And kind of similarly to um, uh, to Unity, I believe you can kind of make it 
make the sky change depending on the direction that the sun is pointing, but I haven't uh, set that up. But by default, you have this sun and changing this main sun changes the shadows and all of that as, as we've done before. And as you've seen these two as well, you know, we have our point lights and all of this stuff as well uh, um, that we have uh, used in Unity already. Um, it is much more important, however, in here to, to think about how far your light actually reaches um, because your actual distance, this attenuation radius, um, notice this little red number here. The more objects it touches, the more objects need to be rebuilt. More objects need their lighting to be rebuilt. So there is a useful thing with the building of lighting that um, it will only build the lighting of the lights that touch an object, you know? So it, it does have a little efficiency thing that it does and, and stuff like that that you guys are gonna figure out. Um, we have this rectangle light, which I'm not gonna touch because it's new and I don't wanna lie to you. Um, but then we also have this little thing called a skylight here. And a skylight essentially has its own little like settings and stuff. Um, but one thing you can do with a skylight, uh, essentially it adjusts the overall uh, you know, lighting of the scene, just overall the how, how the light goes over it. Um, but something you can do here is essentially put in kind of like an environment map for it. So right now the source for this skylight, um, for this adjustment, is some kind of S, SOS captured scene. So I think this is like this is something to do with the scene itself. Um, but you can change that to SLS uh, specified cube map. Right, so instead of just the captured scene that, that you're working on the scene itself, uh, you can choose a specific map, and by default it's not going to do anything. It's going to keep it black because you know I haven't I haven't got one in here, uh, but thankfully uh, there's this wonderful website which changed its name. It used to be called H uh, HDR HDRI Haven, and they changed it to Polyhaven now. Uh, and this has a lot of free stuff in it. And one thing it has is these images called HDRIs. Uh, and this is what an HDRI is. It's essentially kind of like a, a sphere, an image sphere or an image map. Imagine those, you know, those Google Google Maps cars that go around and take like circular pictures and stuff. This is what this is. Um, so let's take this, this one. Uh, and you just need to make sure it's set to HDR, get the resolution you want. I'll go 4K because why not? Let's grab that one. I've actually already got one in the scene, but uh, I wanted to show you the website as well. So, you know, this is a good place to play around with these if you want to. Um, and then I'm gonna come here. I'm going to find my downloads, pull this in. I shouldn't put it in the maps folder, but I'm not I'm not being too careful about my folders right now. Ba -ba -ba. There we go, it's in here. And I'm just gonna grab the skylight again, and I'm just gonna drag this in here. And you can see it's just made a very slight tonal adjustment. Um, and it's just set it to kind of this sort of thing. Now, I wouldn't use these unless, until you're pretty much done with everything else to do with your lighting, because they do do a very slight or, or significant uh, adjustment depending on the one you use. And there are more stuff you can mess around with. To begin with, I would only worry about uh, just using normal lights and uh, positioning them how you want and, and figuring that stuff out. Now, there is a few more things in a scene that you might notice, uh, and those are more to do with visual effects. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, uh, let's start with like these two big boxes here. So one of these boxes is a light mass importance volume, which I'm kind of not gonna go into right now. I think it's better if Sawyer covers, covers the more advanced lighting things uh, with you because you can talk about them in more uh, detail. But this bigger one here, I will mention because you guys already have experience with this. This bigger one is a post-process volume. You can see it right here in the visual effects window. And this works exactly the same way as your post-process volume in Unity. It has a lot of different like effects for your lens, for your color grading. It has visual effects and stuff. And as long as you're inside it, it works. So you can even like turn on uh, some post-processing effects, like, bah, bah, bah. where's the fancy stuff? Um, 
I don't know where it is, but there's some fancy stuff you can turn on as well. You got motion blur as well. There's even global illumination, which is the overall lightness and darkness of a scene, which I recommend not to mess with um, unless you're getting really stuck with your lighting. So yeah, you do have that. I would say probably always good to take a look at your ambient, uh, no, not your ambient occlusion map, excuse me. Uh, your ambient occlusion, which is somewhere here, which you can find. Um, anyway, yeah, you have that there. You guys know what that is. I just want to cover a couple of more things in here uh, that, are, that are quite kind of like fundamental. One of them is this atmospheric fog. Uh, and the atmospheric fog, if I can find, if I can turn it off here, uh, visible, right? So the atmospheric fog is essentially like a kind of fog that uh, is in the atmosphere, it can, uh, if you have a very large scene or an outdoor scene, you can turn on this atmospheric fog, essentially gonna like make the distance slightly foggy. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I don't know if it's gonna work in here, but let's give it a go. Um, and you also here have, uh, if I can actually make this invisible, this atmospheric fog, do they have it in the default scene? Uh, they don't. It does also have a lot of uh, thing you can mess around with in here, including fog multiplier. Actually, let's turn that on. Create fog multiplier. Yeah, it's not too no, it's not too intense, is it? It's not too like crazy. Oh, okay, never mind. I I, I changed my changed my mind. It, it, you can make it pretty intense. Um, and then you also have this thing called exponential height fog, which is the same sort of thing but more to do with height. Um, so you know it has a slightly different effect. Uh, it changes depending on how far stuff is uh, above and below you, etc. Okay, little, little post processing things. These first three, just little post processing thing I wanted you guys to know are there. Now, there's just one more thing to do with lighting I want to uh, tell you about, which is again something that's pretty, you know, basic, it's pretty foundational, not too complex, um, which is reflections and how reflections work here. And I think, I'm not certain, but I think I've explained this uh, when we were doing Unity, I'm not certain, uh, but essentially reflections here work with our sphere, uh, reflection capture actors, and there's spheres and there's boxes and, and different ones, um, so by default we have this big one here, and essentially how this works is if you have a very shiny, uh, very shiny material, and bear in mind this is maybe the spot where my computer explodes uh, because it doesn't like shiny materials uh, but if you have a very shiny material essentially what's going to happen is um, it's going to do that google google maps effect right from this reflection capture actor uh, it's gonna essentially this thing looks around just like a google maps camera right and then when an object needs to reflect something it just looks for the closest bit of information that is offered by these things and it it uses it if that thing's radius is inside so this this reflection capture this radius covers everything right so all of this stuff are going to look to that actor to reflect so i got these really shiny objects here i'm actually going to check whether i made them as shiny as possible i did they're as shiny as possible uh, what about the color make it like totally bright there great beautiful um now they're gonna take a bit of time to load again because they're super shiny um oh do you think it's gonna happen oh no it's just saving okay thought we were at the the break point where we we're gonna get our first crash it's like your first car uh, but that's a lot shinier now i just want it to be a bit shinier so we can see a little better but as you can see as i'm moving around it's showing me this scene right behind which is essentially the actual opposite side because this actor is in between the two spaces it makes sense uh, but if you do have something that's really close depending on your graphic settings and a lot of other stuff the thing that's very close will be visible kind of like this but of course when I move further away it gets it gets less noticeable although that is super close um, now, let's look at the other side, 
when we put a reflection on this side. So this is still reflecting the floor, it's still reflecting the chairs and the table, but there's nothing here, right? It's almost like a portal, because the only reflection this object can use is the one from this actor, and this actor is seeing this room, not the outside. If I move this actor outside, um, I believe I'll have to rebuild the lighting for it to actually update. There's a button, you can update it from here, but I don't know where it is. Uh, let's do a build lighting only. This is going to take a little bit longer because we have these very shiny objects in the scene. Um, but hopefully it will not do too slowly. Um, and essentially what you need to do uh, is have several of these actors in the scene. Um, so that kind of any kind of very reflective object is covered. Um, I think these should update in a second. But as you can see, this isn't really reflecting anything anymore. It's because in that direction it's just the abyss. This is only able to reflect this because it's the closest thing to it, right? And apart from that, it's just kind of reflecting a wall, which is all that the actor can see. And on this side, it's just reflecting the empty space because that's all that this actor can see in this direction. And in this direction, all the actor can see is a wall and that's why it's kind of reflecting its own self, right? So how do you space out, <coughs> excuse me, reflection capture actors? Uh, the way that um, I've done it, my, my colleagues who are environment artists have done it. Oh, there we have it. There we have it. Our first crash. Congratulations. You can all get your uh, certificates now. Um, I'm going to show this last part. Um, paint, because we are professionals. Um, and we don't need Unreal anymore, because that's the last thing I wanted to show you. Um, so, if you have a... There we go. If you have a scene, let's say this is your scene, uh, let's say it's a it's room based because rooms are kind of easy to explain. Let's say you have this bit, this part of the room. It's like your Sims house or whatever, right? Um, something like that. Let's say you have an outdoors bit here. It's like your garden or whatever. And let's say this is like Tina's room and she has like a mirror here. Or let's say actually it's the bathroom because that makes more sense. And there's a mirror. Let's say you got your like your TV here, right? Uh, and you got like some windows here as well, right? Okay, so where do we put reflection capture actors? So you need one that covers everything. And then you need one in every region of the house. So you're going to need one in this region of the house. You're going to need one in this region of the house. Um, they do have square reflection capture actors now as well, which is really good. And you can use square ones for this purpose as well. Uh, I'm going to show it with circles just to show it the hard way because the easy way is pretty easy. Uh, so you can have capture actors in all of these areas, right? And also, though, this is going to be right in the center of the room. What about these windows? What about these mirrors? So you can put one right in front of the mirror. You can put one right in front of the TV. Put one right in front of this. And you can extend it a little so that it's actually kind of covering it properly. Like, where would the person stand to see in the mirror? And all of this. Um, although, to be honest, if the mirror isn't blocked properly, the central one is going to be enough. But, you know depends what you want to be visible in this reflection, right? Um, so just for this house, you know, how many is this? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just for like this little house, because you have one big one, then sectionals, then details, right? Um, I don't know if uh, any of you are going to have very shiny spaces. Some of you might. Some of you are doing more cartoony things that don't have much shininess at all but um, you will uh, be able to tell as you go how you would do it. All right, well, uh, I think that's it. Let me, let me stop.